The MC-21-310, the most recent iteration of Russia's MC-21 aircraft, has encountered substantial obstacles as a result of import substitution. First Deputy Prime Minister Denis Mantarov acknowledged in September 2024 that the aircraft's declared range could not be achieved due to the use of heavier Russian-made subsystems and avionics, which in turn increased its weight. The MC-21's weight has increased by approximately 5.75 to 6 tons as a result of the substitution of Western components with Russian-made parts, according to reports. This weight increase has resulted in a substantial decrease in the aircraft's altitude and range capabilities, with some estimates indicating that the range may be reduced to less than 2,800 kilometers. The MC-21-300, which was initially anticipated to have a range of approximately 6,000 kilometers, was powered by Pratt & Whitney engines. In a typical two-class seating configuration, the MC-21-310's effective range has been reduced to approximately 5,100 kilometers as, as a result of the transition to the domestically produced PD-14 engine and the heavier components. The PD-14 engine has a specific fuel consumption, SFC, of approximately 0.526 kg per kilogram force hour, which is higher than the SFC of more efficient Western engines, such as the Pratt & Whitney PW100 GJM, which is approximately 0.485. This increase in fuel consumption restricts the aircraft's payload and range capabilities. It is uncertain whether this factor has been included in the budget for the approximately 6-ton weight increase. The MC-21-310 confronts many challenges when compared with its primary competitors, the Boeing 737 MAX 8 and the Airbus A320neo. The A320neo has a range of approximately 6,300 kilometers and can accommodate approximately 195 passengers in a two-class configuration. In contrast, the 737 MAX 8 has a maximum range of 6,570 kilometers and can fly about 200 passengers. On the other hand, the MC-21-310's reduced passenger capacity and limited range approximately 163 in two classes, render it unsuitable for high-density and long-haul routes. Furthermore, the MC-21's increased fuel consumption results in increased operational expenses when contrasted with its Western counterparts. The MC-21 has a slightly wider compartment, 3.81 meters, than the A320neo, 3.70 meters, and 737 MAX, 3.76 meters, which can improve passenger comfort. Remember, according to official specifications, the MC-21-3 and 10 can accommodate 163 passengers in a typical two-class configuration, 16 business and 147 economy seats, but its maximum seating capacity is 211 passengers in an all-economy layout. To overcome these weight-related constraints, the MC-21-2110, formerly known as the MC-21-200, is being developed as a modified variant of the aircraft. The fuselage of this variant will be reduced by one section, approximately 8.5 meters, enabling it to maintain the original range parameters while accommodating fewer passengers, 140 to 170, in comparison to the 211 passengers in the base MC-21-310 model. Menturov emphasized that this modification would facilitate the operation of airlines more efficiently due to the modified weight characteristics. The MC-21 210 is currently in the early phases of development. The prototype construction and testing are anticipated to require a minimum of four to five years, which will extend its potential readiness beyond 2029. The design phase alone is anticipated to incur a cost of nearly 2 billion rubles in 2025. In the interim, the original MC-21-3110 has been subject to numerous delays in series production, and it is now expected that deliveries will commence in 2026. So the question is whether the MC-21-2110 will make the plane competitive against Western planes in the Russian market. The MC-21's competitiveness in the Russian market against the Boeing 737 MAX and Airbus A320neo, including the forthcoming MC-21-210 variant, is highly uncertain post the lifting of sanctions. The MC-21 series is inferior to its Western counterparts in terms of performance and efficacy. 
The PD-14 engine that powers the MC-21 has a higher specific fuel consumption compared to the Pratt & Whitney pw 100 gjm and CFM LEAP engines used on the A320neo and 737 MAX, leading to increased operational costs. Furthermore, the MC-21 NAT-210 is anticipated to accommodate a smaller number of passengers, approximately 132 to 165, than the shortest variants of its competitors, including the 737 MAX 7, which can accommodate approximately 172 passengers, and the A320neo, which can accommodate up to 195 passengers, due to its shortened fuselage. The MC-21-210's versatility on medium-haul itineraries is further restricted by its lower range compared to the 737 MAX 7. The MC-21's prospects are further diminished by market dynamics. Throughout history, Russian airlines have favored Western aircraft due to their exceptional reliability, efficiency, and the extensive global support networks that accompany them. After the Cold War, this trend was further exacerbated by the transition of carriers such as Aeroflot to Airbus and Boeing fleets. It is probable that Russian airlines will resume the procurement of Western aircraft if sanctions are withdrawn. International organizations such as the FAA and ESA have certified these aircraft, something the MC-21 currently lacks. The MC-21's appeal is limited to Russia and allied countries due to the lack of such certifications. Production and cost challenges also constrain the MC-21. The production costs are likely to have increased due to the necessity of replacing foreign components with heavier domestic ones and the delays caused by sanctions, although the product was initially marketed as a cost-effective alternative with a target price of approximately $35 million per unit. This negates any potential economic advantage that the MC-21 may have had over the A320neo or 737 MAX. In the interim, Boeing and Airbus operate supply chains that are both scalable and robust, which allows them to more effectively satisfy customer demand. While the MC-21 does provide a wider cabin than both the A320neo and 737 MAX, which could potentially improve passenger comfort, this advantage is unlikely to be sufficient to compensate for its limited range and higher operational costs in the eyes of airlines and passengers. While comfort is crucial, airlines prioritize fuel efficiency, range, reliability, and maintenance support when selecting aircraft. Now, do you think Russia should ban the purchase of Western aircraft except in some sectors? Please let us know in the comments. Please like, subscribe, and share our videos. In addition, please take our memberships